Shocky Amy here. So today in this video we'll take a look at the CTA Sniper Rifle Gun. This is for PlayStation 3, PlayStation Move. So it's basically a shell that you can put your move controllers into and use for shooters. So this is the front of the box. It's got the CTA logo and Sniper Rifle Gun. It's got a picture of this guy holding the gun. Uh, there is another bigger pic there as well as some of the attachments attached to it. Got the PlayStation Move logo there. Includes a navigation controller cradle. Down the bottom here it says features include supports a PlayStation Move motion controller, suitable for a variety of combat titles, highly customizable body configuration, also allows additional support for PlayStation Move navigation controller. Package includes sniper off a body, attachable muzzle, attachable stock, attachable scope, sniper bar pod attachment, navigation controller cradle. That's what it comes with. So on the top and the sides you've got the same sort of features and everything like that so it's nothing really um, nothing really new. On the back of the box it goes into a bit more detail uh, which I'll just do a bit of reading of the main features up top here. PlayStation Move Sniper Rifle Gun PlayStation Move naturally lends itself to more realistic gaming, yet to truly feel what it's like to be in the midst of combat, serious warfare enthusiasts will need CTA's digital sniper rifle gun in their arsenal. The motion move controller is simply based, placed in the forearm, and the rest of the accessory can be customized to suit the player's preference or the game requirements. The scope, rear stock, and muzzle are easy to detach, transforming the full-size rifle into a smaller shotgun-sized firearm. There's also an included sniper bipod attachment to allow for steady, low to ground aiming and attachment for accommodating the navigation controller if the game calls for one. The options are simply limited and the feeling of intensity can't be beat. And then it's got the same sort of features down here as it did on the front. On the bottom says it's compatible with the following games, Killzone 3, SOCOM 4, MAG, The Shoot, Time Crisis, Rising Storm, Raising Storm, and basically other move shooting titles. Alright, so let's go ahead and now open this box up and have a closer look at this gun. Okay, so it comes in this packaging like this, all disassembled. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull it all out and show you individually basically what you get and then we'll assemble the gun. So first piece out is basically your stock right here. Next piece is your scope like that. So this is your navigation controller cradle. As you can see, it moves. This is your muzzle. Uh, this is the bipod attachment. And this is the main body of the gun. So that's the main body. Uh, so you've got your casing here where you put um, basically the move controller as the pictures there shows. Uh, you've got a trigger here which actually presses that little black thing there. You can see that. I'll pull the trigger. You can see both sides. And that's the front of it. So as it stands at the moment, you could easily use it as a shotgun. I'll just put the, the move controller in here so um, you can basically get an idea for it of uh, what it will look like. I just may have to bear with me for a moment while I just attach this in here. I have to just fold up this wrist. OK, 
Okay, so that's slightly fit, and it does have a little bit of room in the back here, as well as tucking in that um, basic -y strap that comes with it. So that's what it looks like actually in the gun, and you can still access all the buttons up here. So on its own like this, you could easily use this as a standard gun. You're aiming around and you're shooting like this, which is pulling that trigger inside here, which is pulling the trigger on the actual um, move motion controller. So as it is, you can quite easily aim like this and use it in a standard shooter game like on the rails shooter, um, like Time Crisis, where you're on a rail and you're just aiming and shooting at the screen. But say you want something a bit more, you don't want a little shotgun like this, you want something that's a bit more configurable. Well then you can start adding basically extra accessories. For instance, you've got your stock here. It's so basically we'll just clip this on. You can see there's grooves in the handle here. That's where they slide on with those grooves there. So just bear with me while I just slide this on. It clips in really easily. And voila. So now you've got a gun with a scope as you can see. Oh, a scope, a stock, sorry. So this is a shoulder stock, so now you can easily just leave it as is, put that in your shoulder blade, and go and fire. So it's leaning against your shoulder, so it's making it a bit more comfortable to fire for you. But say that's not enough, you would like a scope. That's easy done. Here you've got your scope. Basically, all you're doing is clipping it on there. It's got these grooves here. You take those little um, grooves underneath here, you align it with them, and you clip it into place. And slide forward. Now, this is a bit tighter. It's just the way the mechanism works, but once you've got it slid into place, it clips in really easily, like so. The only thing I don't like about this top scope, which I'll say straight off the bat, is that, as you can see, it's on a pivot. As you can see, it's really kind of loose, um, just so it moves easier. You can push it down slightly to make it a bit less, um, but that's how loose it is. That's the only thing I don't like about this kind of scope on this particular model. Um, it just does not, it's not very steady, because it's not really meant for aiming. I mean, you could aim, if I just do this, you could easily aim down it. Um, the idea to make to do that and actually make it loose is so that it, it, you could actually go right up against it and sort of look down the barrel. It, I guess it just customizes more to, you know, so you don't have to hold it like a proper gun, you can just sort of wing it, but it's not very realistic this part, at least. Um, but it still feels like quality, it's not because it's loose, it's just, I don't know why they did that. That was a feature they could have done with that, they could have just made it rigid, which would have been better. Okay, so that feature is done. We've got a scope on there. Next, we can add the muzzle, which will make it a longer, um, give it a longer kind of barrel here. And you do it the same sort of way. All you're doing is sliding that in and then tilting it, turning it basically to the side, and that'll lock it into place. And now you've got an even longer gun, which I'll just have to pan the camera to get into actual view here. You've got an even longer gun. And I might be able to get into full camera view if I just stand up. There we go. That is basically your sniper rifle assembled uh, without the bipod or the move cradle. So, next step is, let's say you were on a rail kind of game and you wanted some kind of stability, because I mean it is a sniper rifle after all, then you can add the next attachment which is the bipod, which is this. So it's basically just a little stand. It's sort of, um, it looks like those other sniper rifle um, bipods you see in games and movies. You just clip it in there and you turn it. And now you've got a stand on there. So that stand allows you to basically sit it onto something and snipe like you would do um, if you were really a sniper. So it just adds those kind of things where it can you know, sit on the surface. Um, I mean, it stands fairly well if you're leaning on it. Um, then it's not hugely strong. You can fold these up if you wanted to, but only the one folds up that much. So um, this is what it looks like from the front. You want to see that? So, and it's a very long gun once you've added the muzzle and the stock onto it. So, yeah. 
But that's what the actual bipod attachment looks like. And I'll just show it in full view again so you get a good idea. As you can see, it adds a bit of um, kind of uh, depth down there. Looks pretty awesome from that part of it. And the final attachment, uh, which we'll just pull this off here, the bipod off, so we can show you the last attachment, uh, is the navigation cradle. So this is what it looks like here. You see? Um, so this basic cradle um, allows you to put the navigation controller in it, and this is for move games that need you to move around. Um, games so like SOCOM, Killzone, any sort of game that needs movement, you need to attach this. And basically, you need to attach um, your navigation controller, which is this one, your move navigation, into the cradle, like so, until it's clipped into place, like that. Now, as you can see, this has got a bit of a pivot here, so you can get a bit more comfortable. Um, you install it just like you did the other one. I think it's this way, actually. You do have to align these little... Bear with me, guys. Just got to align this. If you don't align the two marks, it doesn't go in properly, so... Okay, I was just putting it the wrong way. That's why it didn't go. Okay, so that's all set now. So basically, um, you're holding the gun as normal. You've got your cradle here. You're shooting, and you're moving and using all the other function buttons down here. As you can see, and it moves up and down, so you can actually move it to wherever you're comfortable, depending on how you're holding the gun, I guess. And you're moving it around, you're aiming, and of course you can use this as a more stability because it's actually giving you an extra kind of thing to lean on. So you're kind of aiming more. So I'll do a bit of an overview so you can see that in its full length. I'll stand up again. So as you can see, it also adds a bit of um, depth down to it, but it's a really, it's a long gun this one. So it, it's a it's a fairly big weapon you're having here. Um, so how does it work? You say well, it it works pretty well. I mean you're using the move functions on it. Uh, you're using uh, the navigation controller, so it works just as good as any kind of shell does. And I mean it's a sniper rifle. It looks pretty cool, and these are really cheap as well. So you can pick them up for next to nothing. And it is recommended to have some sort of shell for shooters in that, so I mean if you're really into sniping games then this would be ideal for you because obviously it kind of is it's remnants of all those sniping games and it feels like you're actually holding a sniper rifle. Like uh, the only down point that I can really say about this gun is the scope. With its loose kind of pivot point. Um I don't even know why they did it. I don't why did they do it, C C T A. That's the only down point of this gun. I wish it was rigid, if it was rigid then it would be perfect, but the fact that they make it on a move and they make it really kind of wobbly and kind of loose, it, ju it just kind of breaks the illusion of it being a sniper rifle. Um, so that's not a good point whatsoever. But since the gun is so cheap, it doesn't detract you much because you can just pull the scope right off and not use it at all, or you can leave it as it is and try use it. It won't make a huge difference in the game. Because at the end of the day, you're going on the crosshair on the actual screen, not on the actual scope itself. So, you know, it's not a really big uh, factor in playability. Um, it's got quite a nice trigger on it. Um, it overall works pretty well with shooters. I've had no issue using it. Um, it is a big gun, so if you're short of space, then it might not be the gun for you. You can get a lot more smaller um, kind of move guns. Um, but, I mean, if you're after something a bit of a a bit of a wow factor or a bit different for your move games and this is definitely something that um, would be awesome to display or put up while you're not using it and then when you use it pick it down on your basically armory and go and play some shooters so overall it's a pretty good um, 
pretty good shell for the price you pay for it. I mean, you can pick this up for about $30, so it's really cheap. And for that, I would say it's worth it. Um, any more, and it probably wouldn't be. So if you're picky, don't get this one. Get either the assault rifle or the submachine gun because they don't have they don't have the wobbly kind of scope. Not like this one, at least. Um, but if you don't want that, then if you want a sniper rifle and you don't really care about the scope, get something like this. Um, but anyway, if you just want something cheap, affordable, again, something like this would do you because it's a fraction of the price in comparison to the official PlayStation Move can move shells. So, yeah, that's about all I can say about it. Um, awesome gun, really cool looking, and works pretty well. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'm Shocky Gamer. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll have heaps more controller and accessory reviews up very shortly. Feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you like this video, then hit that like button. And thanks again for watching, guys.